Welcome to another Faith Clinic Fellowship podcast with me, Evangelist Terry Brunson. Before I begin, I want to speak under the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the gift of knowledge. Ray is listing and has an operation coming up. Ray, you are nervous about this procedure. You are not going to make it through the operation fine. Ray, fear is of the devil and he is a liar. The operation will be a success. Doctors in God's divine healing are working fighting the same enemy of health. God has not given the spirit of fear but of love power and of a sound mind. Keep faith in God and all will be well for you brother Ray. The operation is on your foot. Or ankle bone. You were in a car accident and never got a full chance to recover. I pray to God for your strength to be strong in the power of His might. Well on to the teaching. We will be looking at the topic of grace. Grace is God's provision on what He brought, salvation, what grace taught sanctification, and grace sought service. Read with me in a quick scan mode from Ephesians 1 verses 3 to 6, 15 to 18. Blessed be the God of Jesus, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Him. For according as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of being children by Jesus. 6. He has made us accepted in the Beloved. 15. Wherefore of our faith in Jesus, in love unto all saints. 16. I cease not to give thanks in my prayers for the good work of grace in you. 17. That the Lord has given us in wisdom and revelation by the knowledge of Him. 18. That we may know what is the hope of His calling, and the riches of the glory by His inheritance in the saints in grace. God has provided by grace, through faith, unto all good works that all saints should experience the provision of redemption where grace is the only appropriated substance sufficient to cover all the human badness brought unto God without a requirement of human goodness being made the upfront standard of being accepted of God. Grace has appeared unto all men to receive it on a faith base to report for the duty assigned in all good works towards God. Grace is the saving factor of God that He has in His hand of love for all to reach towards to take it in faith unto the assignment of good works. It's like a dog that chases its tail but doesn't realize that its tail is attached to its body to follow along behind Him. The dog that chases its tail has not yet realized that He already has it. When it comes to the grace benefits of God, most saints of God are in a situation like a dog chasing its tail. There are saints in a chase of the blessings of God that are already attached to by the salvation experience in Christ. The saints already have all spiritual blessings pertaining to life and godliness. See 1 Peter 1 verses 3-4, 2 Peter 1. 3-4 By grace, through faith, unto all good works all saints of God are attached to the provisions of grace in Christ. They have already all things needed to make them complete in Christ. Colossians 2 verses 9-10 says, for in Christ dwells all the fullness of the God bodily, where we are complete in Christ, the head in power over all principality. In Christ, we took on the fullness of everything promised in Him. We were regenerated in a complete fashion to operate as saints with all provisions provided in grace of everything in God's hand to bless us to ask and act intuitively as a believer converted to receive what God has already done in a provision of grace. Grace is God's provision that satisfies the longing of all that is needed to fulfill all hungry and thirsty of the soul. It's not time to ask God to give of what we need. It's time for us to accept that He has already given us what we need. Our task is to receive when we believe. It is time to start experiencing all the blessings that God has provided. At creation, God fixed all provisions in place before Adam was created. Through the revelation contained in this podcast, you are going to learn that God loves you infinitely more than you can ever comprehend. In that love God has already met every need for you to reach for by that love. In God's love, He has already provided everything needed to live the Christian life magnifying all the benefits that God has set before us. See, Psalms 103 verses 2 and 5. The top benefit is the grace benefit. Grace is God's provision that our faith connects to in Christ to make us acceptable to God as a free gift. In grace, all sins are atoned for except the sin of self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is the sin of sins that God cannot deal with where a person thinks their righteousness can outdo what God provided in grace. Sin has been atoned for in Christ, but self-righteousness is God's worst enemy that God cannot seem to bring to the cross if it is not given over to die there. Most self-righteous people are hung up on the hang-up of being so good that they are beyond the need for God's grace to save them. 
They feel their works can qualify them to where they don't need to be justified by the grace God proves. Self-righteous people are deceived by the spirit of religion. They are taken captive by it. They are in a prison of their own good works, thinking that they are smarter than God in righteousness. See, Isaiah 61 verses 1 to 3. Romans 10 verse 3 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. The self-righteous are self-deceived to believe that their religious goodness is superior to God's provided righteousness under His grace. Many trapped in self-righteousness have not yet realized that the worst form of human badness and sin is an attempt to use human goodness manifested by the flesh works of religion to make it a substitute for the righteousness that God provided under His grace provision by the new birth experience in God's riches at Christ's expense. That is an acronym for grace. Religion can't top that God's riches at Christ's expense. That's the grace factor of God. Look at that acronym closely to see if you can find the word grace lodged in this phrase. God's riches at Christ's expense, G-R-A-C-E. We are to rely on grace to do all that is righteous by God's grace power. When Christ died on the cross to save the lost, he became a spiritual boss of grace to empower the saints to live righteously under the power of the Holy Spirit. Titus 2 verses 11 to 12 and verse 14 which says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men to partake of in faith, teaching us to deny ungodliness in good and bad forms, and that we should live righteously under grace in this present world. It is by God's power that we were redeemed to be a peculiar people purified in Christ to walk in Him zealous all good works. Grace points us to the right ways of God apart from a self-dependence of trying to fool God by a religious pretense of the flesh in a prayer watchfulness in a fight to do good by not doing bad. This is like being in the truth of grace in unrighteousness. Romans 1 verse 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against men and women who hold the truth of grace in unrighteousness. The self-righteous are the ones who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Imagine sitting in the pew at church every week making the pretense that you are under God's grace righteousness, but only holding to the truth in a religious form of godliness that is in unrighteousness. 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 5 says, There shall be in the last days religious pretenders claiming God's grace in a disgraceful. Church people in love with their own self importance, covetous and stingy, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, claiming to be under grace, acting all, heady and high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness and religion, but denying the true spiritual power of grace. Many would never think that this is talking about people who are supposed to be under God's grace power. Many think this talking about club hoppers, or beer poppers, or the dope user, self-abusers. This is not the sinner and grinner, slipper and slider runner and hider. No, no. This is the self-dependent church attendee who comes to church in a religious form to meet, greet, and potluck eat, and agree to re-meet next week to hold to the truth in unrighteousness. Acting religiously before God is like holding to the truth in unrighteousness. Church people that act good, by not doing bad as a substitute of being born again of the water and the spirit are under the woe of Cain and doing the works of religion in sensual ways without the spirit. Jude 1 verses 11 and 19 says, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain to run greedily after the error of religion as like Balaam. Jude 19 adds to say, there are they in the church who separate themselves sensual and fleshly to do religion as not having the spirit. Bad people don't hold to the truth in unrighteousness, they just do bad. But self-righteous people do hold to the truth in unrighteousness. Acting religiously in the flesh. They are full of testimony that makes them a testiphony. They sit on their good religion rather than standing on the power of the spirit of grace. Religious people walk in the truth of unrighteousness when they testify that they don't steal, lie, fornicate, masturbate, adulterate, all set be them holding to their religious code. The works of religious restraint is not the same as being constrained by the power of the Spirit under grace. Some who come to God by repentance and confession, and even believe that their sins are forgiven, still fail of claiming, as they should, the promises of God. They do not see that Jesus is an ever-present Savior and they are not ready to rely upon him to perfect the work of grace and commit the keeping of their souls in him, but they chose to rely upon themselves in doing religion rather than looking to God. There is a great deal of self-dependence among the self-righteous. 
There are conscientious souls dedicated to trusting partly to God and partly to themselves. They do not look to God's grace to be kept by His power, but rather they depend upon their own watchfulness against temptation and the performance of certain religious duties to make an acceptance with God. There are no victories in this kind of faith. Such persons toil for no purpose, their souls are in continual bondage to trying to be good by not being bad, and they find no rest until their burdens are laid at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! Many in the body of Christ have a self-righteous attitude fixed on the stinking thinking of synchronism where faith and works are set side by side to do God's work of grace in salvation. These self-righteous synchronistic people honestly think they are saved by a religious work to activate their salvation under a faith and works concept. The Bible tells us early on that salvation belongs unto God to work it His way in salvation. See Psalms 3 verse 8. According to Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 10, this holds God's secret to the salvation process. The prepositional words by, through and unto are the make-defining points to notice. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, By grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves for it is not of works, for anyone to boast of. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ unto the duty of good works that God has before ordained that we should walk in them. It is observant to notice how God's process of salvation flows in prepositional concepts. It is by grace, through faith, and not of works, unto good works. It should be noticeable by looking at the prepositional word by, through, and unto to realize how we are saved. It's by grace through faith unto a duty of good works as Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 10 outlines this for us to see, but many miss it altogether. However, can you see it? Have your eyes been opened to this concept? It is right before your eyes to see for yourself. Ephesians chapter 2 give the salvation outline, but Titus chapter 2 takes us through the process in the grace work. Titus 2 verse 11 says, For it is by the grace of God that salvation is brought to all men. What grace brought? Salvation is a pure work of God's grace. It is a grace work where God awakens the sinner to respond to his grace and faith, to the fruit of good works. Sinners are dead to where it takes the Lord to awaken spiritual life in them. That is the grace work of God to put the awaking in the sinner to come alive to a spiritual awakening. Notice, Ephesians 3 verse 16, 5 14, Without God's grace we are spiritually dead. Without God's grace we are devilish to do what the devil direct in us. Sinners sin because they are full of the devil. The grace of God can correct that. Without God's grace we are dead and devilish, and we can add that without God's grace we are disobedient to rebel as sinners. Grace changes the sinner into a saint. W.E.R. were born in sin, and by God's grace we can get born again by what grace brought to us. Salvation. Without God's grace we are dead, devilish, and disobedient, but we're also deprived. We have a sinful nature that we were born into. Psalms 51 verse 5 says we were born in sin. Isaiah 48 verse 8 says from our mother's womb we were transgressors due to Adam's transgression. Grace was brought to correct that. We cannot be cultured to change the sin nature by any human cultivation in religion. We need God's grace. It was grace that brought salvation in an awaking process. Ephesians 2 verse 1 says, And you have he made alive who were spiritually dead in trespasses and sins. Ephesians 2 verse 2 says, Wherein in time past you did walk according to the course of this world disobeying God, according to the devils leading you to sin by his evil spirit that now works in all the children of disobedience. Ephesians 2 verse 3 says, Among whom also we all had our conduct in fulfilling the desires of the flesh by nature as one of the children of wrath, even as others. Now Ephesians 2 verse 4 says, But God. Who? But God's work of grace before faith on our part kicked in. Grace was God's work that brought salvation to us to work through us in mercy and by His great love for us to save us. All right, so what has grace brought? It has brought salvation. We were not saved by the merit of man but by the mercy of God. We were not saved by the goodness of man but by the grace of God. Salvation is not a reward for the righteous. Salvation is a gift for the guilty. This is what grace has brought. Salvation. Titus 2 verse 12 says, Teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts, 
we should live soberly, righteously, and godly, in this present world. What grace taught? Grace brought salvation, but now we see that grace taught sanctification which is a work of grace to empower in the Spirit to live the Christian way. Under salvation there is nothing to earn, it is God's doing, but in sanctification, there is a lot to learn. The first lesson is to learn that sanctification is a work grace in the Holy Spirit under grace working in us to do. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform. This is a lesson that many in the body of Christ have failed to learn. Grace working in you to perform. Many want to perform of their own will. Psalm 110 verse 3 says, The people of God shall be made willing in the day of His power of grace to fulfill the beauties of holiness. Philippians 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 says, And God said, My grace is sufficient for you, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Titus 2 verse 14 says, Jesus, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all sin, and purify us unto himself as a peculiar people, zealous to perform all good works by a grace power. What grace sought? Grace brought salvation, grace taught sanctification, lastly, grace sought service to show in Christian fruit. Grace purchased us by the blood of Jesus. Grace did it without us, asking, but it was done for us to ask in faith. 1 Peter 1 verse 18 says, Forasmuch as we know that we were not redeemed by corruptible things, as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Grace is the provision of Jesus provided out of love. God loved us to provide the provision. Faith is our response to what God did by grace for us and in us to make us awaken to act in faith to come to God by Jesus. John 3 verse 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave Jesus his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Jesus should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus is the source of salvation, but it is the grace of God as the means to it. Grace is the provision, faith is the activator, and love is the overall scope of being saved to glorify God to be chosen to be among the saints to repopulate Eve with that fallen number that was kicked out. I would like to take this opportunity to give you a chance to make your acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ by faith to bring alive His promise of salvation in you who desire to make a change in your destiny. Faith in Jesus can take you from the lowliness of sin unto the heights of holiness in salvation. Romans 10 verses 9 to 10, 13. Would you pray, Lord, Jesus? I desire to accept you as Lord of my life. Come into my heart as I confess my sins. I now turn away from my wrong to put my sins at the same place where I desire to put my faith at the cross of Jesus for a new experience in walking by faith to say, yes to the Lord of all righteousness to fix my focus in faith. Amen. Any donation amount is appreciated. $1, $5, $10, $20, $50. $50. App, dollar Terry Brunson 61. Sister Grace will come and say a few words on how to support the Faith Clinic Fellowship cause with you donation of help. Here is Sister Grace. Hello, I am Sister Grace, the Faith Clinic Fellowship podcast announcer. Hey, if you want to climb up to the Rolex living, you have got to come off of the Timex giving. Faith Clinic Fellowship is a ministry of wood ground to sow your sea of faith and financial pledge. On your phone you can make a cash app donation to the Faith Clinic Fellowship outreach. The cash app is $Sintoribrunson61. That cash app is dollar sign T E R R Y B R U N S O N 61. It's on the screen. You can give $1, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100, or more to the Faith Clinic cause. There is a financial covenant you can enter into to give a donation. Psalms 50 verse 5 says, Gather the saints of God together to give by a covenant offering in a sacrifice. Bring a seed of money to the Lord to sow towards your harvest expectation. There are 25 of you listing that can sow a seed of faith. You can give $1, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 or more to the Faith Clinic cause. Your offering that you give will leave your hand, but it will never leave your life. It will go into your future to multiple as an expected harvest from your seed sown. 
If you want to climb up to the Rolex living, you have got to come off of the Timex giving. Nothing leaves heaven until something leaves the earth out of your hand, says John 3 verse 27. You can sow. Sow what? Sow your seed towards a harvest in expectation. The Bible says you can sow for a healing, a financial breakthrough. New job. Deliverance from drug use and self-abuse. On your phone you can make a Cash App donation to the Faith Clinic Fellowship Outreach. The Cash App is $TERRYBRUNSON61. That Cash App is $TERRYBRUNSON61. It's on the screen. You can give $1, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100, $100 or more to the Faith Clinic cause. If you want to climb up to the Rolex living, you have got to come off of the Timex giving. Sell an offering today without delay. To Cash App is $TERRYBRUNSON61. Let's return to Evangelist Terry Brunson's topic of study.